In this video, I'm going to be going over a common occurrence that happens in pickup trucks when electric over hydraulic plows are added to them, but they don't have a charging system that's designed to run the additional electric load. The common occurrence that will be seen is when you go to run the plow and it actually runs the motor on the plow, is that you'll end up seeing on the volt gauge it will start dropping below the normal 14, 14, 4 area voltage and it will come down while you're running the implement. There's a few things that can be done to correct this. The best course of action would be to make sure that everything in the system is in good working order and that something is not just failing or worn out. The next thing that should be done is to actually measure the output of the alternator and see how much power your alternator is putting out. We do this simply by using a amp clamp and a data logging multimeter. Attaching the amp clamp around the positive lead going out to the plow and run the plow up for the full duration and hold it for a moment. We take the data from that and we can see how many amps are being drawn as the plow is raised. Alright, so once I've measured the amps that are drawn when the plow is running, I pulled the data off and graphed it. I made a mistake here because I did not turn off the auto ranging on my multimeter. So without with the auto range on there, it actually switched ranges and cut off the data in this section right here. But even with that, I can safely assume that I'm going to be 150 plus amp load. Um, getting close to 200 when the plow is deadheaded at the top, which is where the oil in the hydraulics is going over relief and will create your maximum load. The next thing that we're going to do is measure the output of the alternator and see how many amps the alternator actually is putting out when the plow is running with all the accessories on. Okay, so this is the data that we got for measuring the amperage coming out of the alternator. Essentially what's happening here is I have everything, all the electrical loads turned on that would normally be used in the truck. The heater is on high for the blower motor, the headlights are on, and you can see that it's pulling a little under 65 amps and it settles down at about 60. The battery was also fully charged before I started this, so this isn't taken into account if the battery is discharged. And this is it sitting and running and just at idle, the amperage that the alternator is putting out. When I activate the plow and lift it up, you can see that the alternator output spikes. I've zoomed in on the areas where I was lifting the plow, and you can see that it will spike up as high as about 90 amps for a short period of time while the plow is lifting. This alternator is rated at I believe 110 amps but they don't rate alternators for idle speeds. You actually have to look up the data sheets on the alternator and see what they're rated for in order to see how high the engine has to spin and then take into account the pulley size on the crankshaft and the pulley size on the alternator. But for this rough estimate, I'm going to assume that I get a peak output current at idle, which is normally what happens when you're running a plow and you run into a pile of snow and push it up, is that the engine's at idle because the truck is pretty much stopped. I'm going to get about 90 amps maximum output from the alternator. The last information that we want to gather from this system is going to be the voltage at the battery while we're running the plow up and down to see how the voltage is dipping when the system is under the heavy load. So basically we just set up the multimeter, attach the leads to the battery, and then I run the plow I believe four or five cycles in a short period of time so that I can see what effect overloading the electrical system has on the system once we have the data, we can look at it here. 
we're sitting at about 14.3 area for voltage with the truck idling. This is with all of the accessories turned on and when we activate the plow we can see that the first time it drops down to around 12.5 volts. The next time it's actually dropping down to 11.5 volts and 11.5 volts, 11.5 volts. Basically what's happening with this system is as we could see before we are demanding we're going to say 180 amps average every time we're running the plow. But the alternator when it sees this high demand can only provide an additional 30 amps because it's already using 60 of the available amps in order to run all the other loads. So what this is actually doing is creating a 150 amp load on the battery every time the plow is run. This can cause some real problems because essentially you are discharging your battery while you're using the plow. If you only do it this one time and then you drive somewhere and it's 10 minutes later the alternator will probably have time to recharge the battery and it won't be a big deal. But when you start doing it over short periods of time there isn't any time for the alternator to catch up and recharge the battery. The other big problem is that the battery is a standard starting battery which means it's not meant to be discharged deeply and essentially the amount of energy being taken out on a start cycle is actually going to be considerably less than what it is to run this plow which is going to happen again and again and again. Now that we've identified what's going on in the system I'm going to go through and show an example um, basically using a power supply, a dummy load, and a battery to demonstrate this all together. The next video is going to show putting in the bank of supercapacitors to see if we can actually buffer that 150 amp load that's being taken out of the battery by the supercapacitors. It occurred to me while putting together this video that it would probably be pretty hard to follow exactly what I'm trying to accomplish or what's going on. So I decided to model it basically on a tabletop, um, the system in the truck, and what I'm trying to accomplish. Essentially, this is just a set of resistors, and it's going to be the load, which is going to equate to running the actual electric motor on the hydraulic unit on the plow. Have a power supply here. This is going to be what represents the actual alternator on the truck. Um, basically by varying the current on it I can vary the equivalent of what the size alternator is capable of putting out. And this is the battery for the truck. So to start out with I'm going to just disconnect the battery and we're going to see at 14 volts how much how many amps my electric load or the plow here will draw. So it draws 2.3 amps at 14 volts. Right now I have this set at 15.1 amps maximum current. So to simulate what's happening in the overloaded electrical system I'm going to turn this down to 1 amp. Disconnect my electric load and reconnect my battery. So, right now we can see we have 0.3 amps going into the battery. When I connect this load with the too small of alternator output, the voltage starts dropping in the entire system it's maxing out the amperage at one amp just like the alternator is maxing out everything it can put out and we can see that the power to drive the load is now actually negative it's it's pulling over an amp out of the battery so the one solution for this problem would be to actually install a larger output alternator 
And I can basically simulate that simply by turning up my power supply to 5 amps, which is over the load requirement. So when I do that, you can see that the alternator is now putting out 2.5 volts. It's putting power into the battery still while it's running the load. that's not what I'm going to be trying to do to correct this problem. What I'm going to be doing is putting my bank of supercapacitors in parallel with the battery in the next video and I'll model the same thing on the bench. Thank you very much for watching and if you see any errors in my calculations please let me know.